Hello everyone, we are group 13. It's called Braytas, basing which is a company basing in both Canada and USA. We are a oil company and 80% of our production is way toward crude oil and natural gas. For the past performance, um, we did have a very high return on 2013, but we in the past five years we always have a high car pass as well. So due to the price oil price drop in 2013, as you can see here, our uh, company's performance is uh, bad during that period as well, but we started to recover since 2015. And as you can see in the graph of cash ratio, we are now in need of cash as well. In the AGM this year, our proposal is to merge with Region River Exploration Limited by shares. Although the new company will be named after Baytest, the Range River uh, company shareholders will receive 1.5 six shares of the new company after the merger and they will hold the majority of the new company. Let me introduce the other company in this m case, that's Raging River Exploration Company. It is a junior oil and gas company basically operating in Canada and from the uh, from the graph, we can see it has two really good quality assets that's in Viking area and these two assets basically generate most of the free cash flows of the company and it will keep uh, building up the free cash flows for the combined, combined company after the and we tried to analyze the past performance of Raging River Company and similar to the previous case we can see after 2014 the huge drop in the oil price resulted uh, a huge drop in the company's return, but compared to the Baytex data, we can see it's still generating a positive return, while Baytex is basically having a negative return. And from our analysis, we can show Raging River is actually having more free cash flow, which also benefits the combined company. Um, this next few slides will look at the future energy outlook. Um, so we can base our assumptions on the oil price on this data. This data is taken from the BP Energy Outlook 2018 and it shows the growth in GDP and the growth in urban population um, for the future and these both lead to a rise in the total energy requirement of the world and in this graph we can still see that um, oil and gas still make up a large proportion of this. In addition to this, the U.S. will also become a net exporter of oil and gas, and this affects our companies as we're based in North America. This slide shows different oil price scenarios. This graph is taken also from BP, and it shows that uh, regardless of the uh, energy scenario of the future, that oil and gas will still make up a very large part of the energy mix. Before going into the numbers, we want to mention uh, explicitly the valuation part. As you will see when uh, going into our fully integrated uh, dynamic Excel model to value both companies and to project the balance sheet, the cash flow, and the P&L into the future, we um, are having and had in the past, past always negative cash flow. This is because we are so dependent on the oil price and the oil price has been fluctuating a lot and there has been a huge drop in 2014, I think. And furthermore, we have to reinvest heavily in CapEx to uh, sustain a growth and to being able to extract the oil from our oil fields. Due to this fact, we are the NPV model and the discounted cash flow model might not be very useful to say if the company is undervalued or overvalued because we both what we do is basically just valuing negative free cash flows. Then did our research, we found out that the net asset valuation model is generally speaking more appropriate for oil and gas companies because it takes into account the net assets and not just the future free cash flows because they are just so dependent on capex and oil price. But 
as you can see within our third scenario where the oil price is high, we will have a high oil price and therefore a positive um, free cash flow. And there we can say that the company is might, might be a bit undervalued because due to the high debt we have, but still we have so many resources in Canada and United States that we can say that we might be able to have high revenue in the future if the oil price stays the same and we are not have to invest all the free cash flow which will be generated by the oil price at the high state that we don't have to reinvest all the money and can pay up to the shareholders or just have on a balance sheet in cash. Now for our XM model we have certain assumptions which is first of all we have a linear relationship between oil price and revenue. We assume that 90% or even more is just generated from oil. We do not differentiate between gas and oil and uh, we neglected inflation just to make things easier. And for the terminal value, we have a very low uh, growth, just 1%. This is just because we cannot assume that the company in 100 years will be able to extract oil. Maybe the world doesn't even use oil anymore. As you can see here, now you can see uh, the, the three different scenarios. We have a low, middle, and a high oil price. The high is the yellow one. And, and now it gets really um, clear that we're so dependent on the oil price. If the oil price is high, we're going to have a high return on, on You can see that they always have been in the past due to the oil price in 2015, 2014. Um, our cash ratio gets pretty high just because we have to, uh, we have so many, so much cash within, within the high growth model. But uh, for further information, I encourage you to look into the actual sheets and get the number and, and see how we get to the numbers. So below the table is the key performance indicators based on the consolidated financial statement of the year 2018 March, according to the own predictions of Baytech. So the data are taken from a projected financial statement. And so the first three key performance indicators, ROE, ROCE, and operating profit margin are all negative. But we can still consider that as some improvement of the huge losses of previous years due to the decline of oil price. So that this uh, year can also be considered as a turning point of generating new profit. Now the current ratio is 0 0.47, which is lower than 2 and is not liquid enough. So that a company has limited capability to pay off its debts. So it increases financial stress for management team, for internal and also state external stakeholders. In terms of the gearing ratio, it's about 0.37. So we can see that the company has adequate amount of debt in regard to the average ratio of the industry. And also, lastly, in terms of the EPS and also PE ratio, we can see that the amount of money that the investor will pay for the increase of company's earnings is quite low. It's about minus 6.60. So that the market is not confident enough of the company's performance, of the company's ability to generate future profits. So it will be risky and also difficult for the company to finance through equity. Now we come to the proposal recommendation. Through the analysis mentioned above, we made the decision that the shareholders of, of the Baytex should approve this proposal uh, with regard to the benefits that this merger would bring basically uh, there, uh, with a world-class asset base. The production will be approximately 83% liquids and 17% natural gas, with approximately 82% from Canada and 38% from, from the US. And also the combined company will have a better position to pursue organic growth with increased liquidity of the combined company. Uh, in addition to that, with a diverse oil-weighted asset portfolio and associated capital, cap allocation optimization expected, is expected to provide more profitable growth than either Raging River or Baytex could achieve on a standalone basis. With regard to the merger risks, uh, one thing that is worth mentioning is that the credit ratings of the Baytex may be downgraded, resulting in less access to the debt markets or raised borrowing rates. Now, this is the new board of the new company. One thing is ma was mentioned is that president of the Ranger River will, will join Baytex as the executive vice president with responsibility for exploration land and corporate development. And now it comes to a proposal for future AGMs. Uh, we raised the idea that we should use, should use the cash from the Ranger River to repay loans with the decrease in debt, then we have less interest to pay, and then we have more cash for the dividends. Thank you.